economic troubles that we, are, we have now are in large part related to the diminishing returns of extraction, which means that they are a burden for the economy, and this burden is being felt everywhere. We are not running out of any mineral, but extracting and producing minerals is becoming more expensive because of depletion. So a fundamental issue in the question of mineral resources is how the extraction and production costs are related to energy. Because extracting minerals from the ground requires a lot of energy. You have to um, grind rock, to dig holes in the ground, or to process rock, and to extract the minerals out of it. The minerals you need, because the mineral never, can, never comes pure. It's always mixed with a matrix, which is usually rock. Now, you have two problems. One is that as you move on exploiting the resource, you exhaust uh, those resources which are highly concentrated, easy to extract, and giving you a good yield. And you don't have to use too much energy to extract them. And this is one problem. The other problem is that the energy you use to extract anything normally comes from hydrocarbons. The, mining, the mineral industry uses a lot of energy from fossil fuels. About 10% of the world's energy production is used in, by the mining industry. There is a limited number of high-grade deposits, and therefore cheap mineral resources, which are found in the upper crust of the Earth. Their exploitation built the foundation of previous empires, as well as our modern technological society. Mining is what brought us, us here, where we are, our civilization, our world, our society. Many empires in the history of humankind have been created on the availability of some important mineral commodity. Uh, an interesting example is that of the Roman Empire, which was created on the availability of gold from uh, the Spanish mines that the Romans had. Uh, more recently, we had the case, for instance, of the British Empire, which was built on the energy created by the core resources that were available in England. But then uh, you have this problem, which is depletion. And depletion brings this little problem of diminishing economic returns. So the British Empire had, had been built on cheap coal. It could not survive on expensive coal. So around the 1920s, the production of coal in Britain went through a maximum and then started to decline. And then with this decline of coal, there went the British Empire. We will never run out of minerals, but we will run out of cheap fossil fuels and high-grade ores. The limits to mineral extraction are not limits of quantity, but of energy. Extracting minerals takes energy, and the more dispersed the minerals are, the more energy is needed. Technology can mitigate the depletion problem, but cannot solve it. The depletion of fossil fuels is already becoming a serious problem. The peak of conventional oil production may have passed between 2005 and 2008, while all other oil and gas resources could peak within the next 10 years. Coal production could increase for several years, but at a tremendous cost to the environment. Production from uranium mines is likely to decline during this decade. Metals such as copper, zinc, nickel, gold, silver and others are expected to reach their productive peak within less than two decades. As cheap minerals start to disappear, the mineral industry will begin extracting ever costlier and dirtier minerals such as shale gas and shale oil. So you have a problem that the cheap resources don't exist anymore. One solution which is often proposed and um, described as the solution, the one which really will solve our problems and give us abundance for the next century or even more, is fracking. There's no doubt that we are we can produce gas and oil by fracking, no doubt, but it is expensive. So you have to ask yourself, uh, am I solving really a problem? Or am I creating a bigger problem? Just like that. 
consider that a shale gas well loses about 80% of its output in two years. So you need to drill and drill and drill and drill, and it's expensive. And some people say that we can have a, um, a cycle of extraction which will go through about a decade, which means that in the coming years we already have uh, we will already have problems in keeping production at the present levels. But anyway, we are talking of at best of a few decades, not centuries. The depletion of high-grade ores and rich deposits has geopolitical implications as the remaining resources are concentrated in a handful of countries. For example, only four countries, Chile, Australia, China and Argentina, currently produce almost 95% of global copper output. About 75% of known exploitable phosphate reserves are found in Morocco and Western Sahara while more than 97% of all active mines for rare earths are located in China. Because we have, we had in the past, this wealth coming from mineral resources. Now, in large part, this wealth is gone. So things are changing. We must think of ways of uh, using our resources more wisely and uh, make them last longer. How can we build a society which is prosperous, not necessarily growing, but prosperous, on the basis of mineral resources which are becoming more and more expensive. We must rebuild our prosperity on relatively expensive resources, which means a few things. One is that we have to be much more efficient. That's necessary because, because so far resources were so cheap that we were using them in a very wasteful way, throwing them away. And we need to be much more efficient also in recycling because so far we have been recycling up to about 50% of most metals. So we need to go much higher than that, 90%, 95%, even more. We need to build up new energy sources to solve the crisis. And if we're willing to do this and willing to make the sacrifices which are needed, then we can build a future of prosperity for the whole humankind.